G'day viewers, Jason, Joondal Up Electrical Services. I'm um, just on my way to a job in Padbury to do something I don't normally do, and that's do regular sparky sort of stuff, but um, I'm not putting a PowerPoint in, definitely not putting a fucking ceiling fan in or down lights. I've uh, done my fair share of doing all that stuff. Um, I purely do solar and battery stuff these days, but um, I, uh, I do get a lot of calls. I've been, um, I've been operating for about 25 years all up, I guess. Um, maybe a bit longer than that. And in that time, I've had staff and we used to do a lot of um, real estate work. So, you know, do, you know, we had like seven real estate companies on the books and we do all their, uh, all their stuff. And um, I also used to put a sticker in the meter box every single time we went to a property and my guys would do that as well. So consequently there is, I reckon in the Perth metro area, there's probably thousands of my stickers out there in meter boxes and I, I do get quite a lot of calls. Um, I am on my third business name and that's not because of any shonky operations or anything. Um, it's just purely change of business names. Um, one was due to a split marriage. Uh, so my first business name as an electrical contractor back in the day was j and Maintenance and um, that hasn't been used for a very long time but there's some of those stickers out there and then it was JJC Electrical and Gas. Um, JJC was my name and my two sons name from my first marriage um, and yes I'm a gas fitter by trade also. Uh, in saying that I haven't done gas work for a very long time now. Um, not even sure if my license is valid still, not sure. Um, but then I changed to Joondalup Electrical Services probably, I don't know, eight years ago, I guess, I think. And, um, but JJC Electrical and Gas Proprietary Limited is actually my company name, trading as Joondalup Electrical Services. So, there's three different sets of stickers out there with three different names and I often get phone calls from people wanting regular sparky stuff done. I normally say no, but I'm put today aside to sit in the office and do all the admin bullshit that I hate doing and I guess maybe I'm looking for an excuse not to do it. But this job sounds like an easy job, um, so I'm going to do it. They, they're in a bit of a pickle, they need power urgently. So what's happened is they've got people working there putting in a range hood and it sounds like they've turned the power off and the power won't reset now. So I'm kind of guessing, because this happens a lot and I'm going to give you guys a little trick at the end of the video. Uh, with RCDs or safety switches, um, seems to be the theme this week, RCDs, but anyway. And that follow-up video on Type A is still coming. I'm just getting all the correct information. Um, but with RCDs, you're supposed to test them every three months. Um, and that's obviously to make sure that they're working, but it's also to um, move the internal components on the RCD so they don't seize up. And that's what's happened in this case. So a lot of the times, if the RCD trips, it will trip internally, but then you go to reset it and all the mechanisms inside don't latch into place and the switch just goes all floppy and you can't actually reset it. So I've got a little trick to, uh, which I often share with people just to get them out of trouble until I can get there um, or they can get another Sparky out there to swap out the RCD because ultimately if the RCD doesn't trip or if you can't reset it, then you need to replace it obviously. Um, Incidentally, you are supposed to test them every three months. Did I say that already? Not sure. But you should go out and test them every three months. And by testing, I mean pushing the little test button. So sometimes RCDs will be like a double pole. Um, a double pole switch. Uh, can't quite reach it while I'm driving. I was going to show you an example. So a single circuit breaker is a single pole and then um, an RCD is usually double pole. And what that means is um, 
it, so it looks like two switches side by side. So that's double pole. Um, and so a safety switch or an RCD can be double pole um, or it can be single pole, which is typically an RCBO, which is an RCD combination with a miniature circuit breaker. And how to tell if it's an RCD or an RCBO is it will have a test button, okay? It might be slightly hidden, like right at the bottom, um, or it might be obvious, like a big push button right in the middle of it. But if it's got a test button, it's, a, it's an RCD or a safety switch. So you should be doing that every three months and that prevents what I think has happened here where internally it's failed and they can't reset it. So we'll go and have a look um, and I'll uh, explain to you guys what's going on once we get there. Hopefully it's an easy one and I'm not going to end up up in the roof trying to find a fault because I am definitely not in the mood for crawling through a roof um, today. So uh, it's in Padbury. I've just left my home now. I'm on my way to Padbury. We'll check it out. Okay, so story is the homeowners had some people out fitting a new range hood. And um, apparently what happened is one of the guys had his hand up in the roof space trying to get the plug for um, the range hood because it's just a plug-in on his plug and socket. And he's, he's got a boot. Now how he's done that, I don't know. Um, but then the RCDs have done their job, or its job, I don't know why there's two off, they might have just panicked and turned everything off. Um, but uh, apparently you got a boot, and a um, pretty good one, but uh, the RCD, one of them has tripped. Now, just a bit on RCDs, um, the RCDs are there to protect people not to protect your house from burning down. That's what these do. That's a regular circuit breaker, and that will trip if there's a short circuit or if there's too much current running f through the cable, um, as is marked by that. So that's a 10 amp circuit breaker. So if it goes over the 10 amp mark, it will trip, and if there's a short circuit, it will trip. An RCD is there to protect people. What this does is it measures how much current goes into the circuit and how much comes out. If there's a difference of 30 milliamps, it will trip. Because if there's a difference, it means there's power going somewhere where it shouldn't be. And typically that's gonna be either a fault to earth or uh, someone putting their hand somewhere where it shouldn't be. Um, that's my old sticker, JJC Electric on Gas. Um, that's my old gas fitters number. Quality repairs and it's my professional tradesman, that's me. Um, so these are the ones in question. I'm just having a look. That one reset. Uh -huh. That's exactly what I was talking about. See how it's all floppy there? Now, this is the trick. And please, this is a temporary measure. So what's happening right now is all the mechanisms inside the RCD aren't lining up. All right? Now this is just a temporary measure until you can get a proper electrician out. There we go. So what's happened is all, because it never gets operated, the mechanisms inside are all seized and they don't fall back into place and enable you to reset it. And it's done it again. Give it a whack, jiggle everything around, there we go, alright, but you should use, so that's the test button I was talking about, um, see if there's any more, no, quite often on the RCBOs, like the single, up, single pole RCBOs, there'll be like a little uh, push button at the bottom here, so anything that says test, see it's got a T on it there, um, that is an RCD or an RCBO, and you should be testing. See, that one won't trip. Oh, there it goes. That one's tripping all right now. Oh, that one's floppy too. Oh, it doesn't always work. No, that one's not going to do it. That one's good now.
there we go got it anyway I'm gonna replace both of them so there's a little trick for you just to get yourself out of a bit of mischief as it turns out this gentleman's wife is in palliative care and because they've now got no power she's actually had to go to hospital um, and it was a whole ordeal for them the gate wouldn't work um, she had to go to hospital by ambulance he had to stay here so I could be here home battery would be good home battery would have saved them they would have still had power actually no true no that's a lie because it was the RCD that was faulty home battery is not going to help them at all because it's not a power outage it's a circuitry problem anyway there's a little trick for you on uh, RCDs and safety switches all right as I said guys you must get an electrician out to test them and um, replace them if they are faulty like that cheers guys